Hey everyone and welcome to a new Planet Zoo video. Today we speak about fixing management in Planet Zoo. You think it's impossible? I would even say everything we need is already in the game. I know, it's a bold claim, but hear me out. It's all about balancing. It's gonna be in a balancing act and we are going to talk about five topics in order to understand why I think it's gonna be in a balancing act. Let's quickly go over the topics and then right jump into it. So first topic is currencies. I'm speaking about money, but also the conservation credits. Again, we are going to go in depth about these things and I'm gonna tell you why I think it's all great what we have, but it's totally, there's like a really false balance in there. Topic number two is tools. I mean, we have a tremendous amount of tools in the game, of which half of them are maybe not even used for management purpose, but more about that in the topic. The third one is environment. We do have certain things in the environment that make life, well, should make life harder. In fact, they don't do it. But again, more about that in the, deci uh, the, in the one um, chapter of it. The fourth one is staff. Now, staff is obviously a leading factor, a major driver of your zoo. Still, I think there's a lot to talk about. And the last one being animal care. As we all know, we have to deal with animals in this game. So these are the stars of the show. So they naturally should be of high importance. At some point there are, at others they are not. And we need to talk about that. A major disclaimer at the beginning. I will only talk about two things that might be added to the game. In fact, both things are really minor, so they won't change too much. And I will talk at sometimes about changes to different values in the game rather than actual additions to the game. More about this in the um, specific topics when we talk about them, but just to claim, we try to maintain our focus on things that are already in the game. That's gonna make this video hopefully very exciting and um, yeah, just, uh, curious for you. Uh, I really hope you like this, so let's jump right into the first chapter, currencies. Topic number one is currencies, and I'm gonna take the example of my Purina Hill Zoo, which focuses only on cats. So they eat a lot of food, they take up a lot of money, but also, they make a tremendous amount on conservation credits if you sell them. Now, I'm gonna hit pause here for a second and I'm gonna talk about the currencies in the game real quick. So, we do have obviously money, as you can tell. This is the cash flow and so on. As you can tell, there's a lot going on. We could go over all the graphs and stuff. I'm gonna, not gonna bore you with this. It's totally detailed enough. But then again, there's not too many options to deal with it, but more about that in a second. The second currency we have is conservation credits. You can't see them in here, um, there's no dedicated menu for that, but you will be able to see um, where you can get it. You can earn it by selling animals or also by earning zoo reputation. Now, there are ways to sell your animals and ways to get this. Now, let's first of all start with the conservation credits. It's a new currency introduced with this game. And the basic idea of this was to balance out that you can't get all the animals you want. Sometimes you need this and you need to run your zoo well. Well, that would be a good thing if that would be true. But the problem is nearly every animal you're looking for is also available for money, as you can tell. Sometimes, you know, the wonderful best ones are not available uh, with only money, but you can basically filter and just say only cash listings and then confirm that and you're gonna see we still get some decent animals. They fulfill the job. You can then breed them yourself until you have some gold ones. If you're impatient, you can still get that. But breeding is another thing you are rewarded with a lot of animals that you can then sell and make a tremendous amount of um, conservation credits. Just to show you, um, let's just take one of these cheetahs over here. If I were to sell this one, okay, this one is an elderly, so I can't, um, but I can dis uh, release this animal to the wild and you're gonna see I got 277, which is not that much. But if we were to go over here and just take another one, for example, a wonderful Siberian tiger, which is a golden one and is well, it's actually elderly as well, you're gonna get 235, but you can also sell this one for much more if it's younger. So it's relatively easy to get this higher and it's also relatively easy to earn money from these animals if you sell them. Now, money very early on doesn't play a big role anymore. Simply because as soon as you have, have a certain point, money will flow in easily. But then there is the opposite side. This park over here has never been profitable. No matter what I did, it won't because of food. Now, let me tell you what should be done before we're going to be bored too much. Number one is 
take money for what is worth. Make sure that all the fundings and stuff in your zoo are run, uh, run by money and make sure that you get more control on what your money is spent on. I mean, yeah, you can change the stuff, wages and stuff like that, but you can't really control when to order food, how much to spend for food, and so on and so forth. You don't even know when food is ordered, you know? It would be so much easier if you can plan how much money is spent on food and then just get me an info if it's not enough and just make myself uh, in the position, put myself in the position to deal with that problem, you know? And then on the other hand side, way more easy, just take these conservation credits and make them actually worth it. Make animals restricted and not be able to be purchased by money at all. You know, this could even be randomized, which animals could be available from the beginning with money or without money. And then if you want to have a certain animal, you have to work your way there. And then you also have to make sure that selling animals and breeding animals is actually balanced out. So breeding farms is not going to work that much more. Just imagine the more animals you sell of a certain species, the less you get for that, you know? So you would avoid making these huge breeding farms and then sell all the animals and have like a true bajillion um, conservation credits and also make conservation credits limited to the zoo you're playing in and don't take them over. So that will make, make things a lot more easy um, for, you know, avoiding these breeding farms because then certainly it won't work and even if they lose power over time you can't use them for a different zoo. Now this is obviously some very easy adjustments in the values of the game. You don't need to add anything to the game. There is one more thing we have to talk about the currencies and that is also more control on the money spendings in general. Not only the way how you have it, but I want to have like, it's super uncomfortable to go into every single shop, for example, that's not a shop by the way, or vending machine and then set the price and see if that one is profitable or not. Just give me more control over the goods, you know? Let me control which goods I'm buying or which one I'm selling or whatnot. Just like micromanagement, but on a screen in a, you know, in a data file rather than in the actual game. That will make things so, so much better because then you can really go into managing your cash flows other than just basing that on weird things, you know, and weird requirements by your guest. Anyhow, that should be it for the first topic. It's like a very tiny balance in the values, but it could have a great effect. But that's just the, the, the little one, you know, we have more to say. All right, part two is tools. And you can see I've already opened the menu of a lot of tools in the game. I will say, first of all, that the tools available describe everything that you have in facilities or in habitats to fulfill your guests and your animal needs in a way. Um, we will talk about the animal needs a little bit more in depth in the animal care topic today. So let's focus on the guest and staff needs and requirements. So. Over the time, a lot of things have been added to the game, but then again, they haven't been really helping to balance it out. I will focus on two things. The first one being education. Now, education is something rather important in a zoo game, but the way it has been implemented in here is so great on the one hand side and so weird on the other. So first off, we have insane amounts of things. We have tours, we have got guided tours, we've got these audio tours, we've got um, absurdly great tools like uh, these kids playing things, you know, where you can put your hands on and um, education for your kids. It's really absurd how much Frontier did pay attention to detail here. Really love it, I, it's absolutely gorgeous. But then again, you need to just flutter your zoo with a trajillion of these things. You need to put a million of these education boards down. You need to have tens and tons of audio files. You need to put t 10 tours down, whatnot. But the thing is, you can because it's relatively cheap and it's not connected to anything in your zoo. You don't have to unlock tours. You don't have to unlock education boards. You don't have to unlock anything like that. Um, other than with some scenery packs maybe, but that's that's about it, you know? You don't have to, you have that from the beginning. Why on earth can you do a tour from the get-go? I mean, you could not afford maybe an educator. Good, okay, fine. But 
why on earth, I mean, I pause the game here because snow, we want to see stuff. Why on earth would you need to spend so much? I really would love to see if the whole education stuff would be way more expensive, but also way more powerful. I just, you know, I'm tired of putting down a bajillion of these education stands. I'm tired of scrolling down the list insanely like what can I put down over here you know I'm tired of having to put down all these be quiet signs um, instead of just making a zone that should be quiet I'm tired of making 20 tours or putting down 40 educators to make sure everyone is a corridor in there why on earth do we have to do that and you can see by the rating in the zoo the education is not even halfway in and we have and I'm just going to show you over here uh, at some point I just stopped but um, the education is super poorly but then we do have so so much in here guest education coverage there's a lot in here granted on that top spot I didn't do too much but there's like everything in here it's still too low and I really would love to see a change in this it would be absolutely helpful to have a guided tour, for example, make this super expensive. Make sure that the educator needs to be on the highest level first and has the highest payment available uh, in order to be able to even or eligible to do a tour, for example, and make sure that these things are just very expensive. And that would also add to your topic of currencies again. Obviously, you can't take these topics into silos. It doesn't work. They have to be um, seen as a whole. But that would help a lot to balance out what you can do with the tools and it would make it so much more rewarding you know that if you put down a tour you know you've made it you know you can put it and also it will help because then you have already quite some habitat ready until you are able to do that but the same goes for oh my god drink and food requirements of guests are you kidding these people come into our zoos without having eaten and drink for Two weeks in a row. They they are not hungry. They are about to starve. They are about to die because of having not drank anything in the last 10 months. It's absurd and ridiculous. And this has to be balanced out. No one goes to a zoo. I mean, most people even go to a day trip on a zoo and they don't even buy anything because they have their backpack with them uh, with like snacks in there and so on. And maybe get a Coke or something. I understand that for a game you need to treat that a little bit differently because that would be boring. But holy hell, make these things... Rate them different. Again, it's just a thing about changing values. Give normal shops a way lower value than, for example, the restaurants. I know they have a different value, but not that much. Make it rewarding to have a restaurant in your park. Make it the highlight of the park. Make it also connected to a minimum amount of habitats, for example. I don't know, five habitats equals one restaurant or so. That would help to give a little guidance to how you build your zoo without having an actual guidance in. You know, it's all about making sure people go the right direction with their building process this is also like a thing the game lets people in a way um, on their own and it wouldn't be too well uh, if if that's the thing that guides guides you through without any guidance you know I could speak a million years about tools now because there's so much more to talk about but I will include some tools in the other three topics anyways so I hope you got the point make tools more rewarding and if needed way more expensive and way more powerful but then even with that, you'll make them more rewarding. The same goes for webcams, for example. The same goes for other things. Just connect them to a bigger need for the people. You know, an education board that equals a webcam has to be a tremendous amount more powerful than a normal education board, for example. At this point, it's pointless. You can just plop down a normal one. It doesn't change anything. But these things together would make up for so, so much more. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Which is, and I've never been more happy that it snows in my park, the environment. We have to speak about the environment in Planet Zoo. And let me just start with pausing the game and see if we can see some freezing people over here. Oh, look at that. They are shivering. Yeah, they are shivering. Oh my god, are you wearing even shorts? Yes, you are. Look at them. She's even wearing a top without arms, you know. It's insane. Okay, so this is a point I have complained about forever and ever, starting in Planet Zoo. We have snow. In Planet Zoo, we had a winter biome. Okay, no snow. Fine. But now we have got snow. Why do we have people with different clothing in here, but not different in terms of the environmental influences, like seasons or summer? You know, you see people in summer coming in with their jacket and long trousers and stuff like that. But equally, you see people coming in the wintertime with, like, shorts and t-shirts. 
it makes no sense. It just, I, it drives me crazy. Um, I understand that this needs to change, or actually, if you change this, this needs to be a bigger change. This might also be the biggest change you would need to do with the in-game features. You would actually need to change how time of seasons it's managed. See, now there are two options to do that. Either people packing their jackets and stuff and then just, you know, wear them. I would be even fine if it just makes plop and they have them on, you know, whatever. If not, you could even have like a souvenir stand in which you can buy like a pullover or a jacket or something like that. But stop bringing things that are not necessarily needed. So how do you fix if people are freezing? You put down heaters for guests. Which is insane in terms of energy. Why would you do that? It makes no sense. Also, we don't need to talk about that seasons are absolutely pointless because they are not even correctly. Let's just have a little look for fun reasons. It is January. Okay, and this time it works. We are in the European biome. But I have already seen August in snow in the European biome. I have seen snow in July in the um, desert biome. It, it, it's ridiculous. You see, they are not balanced whatsoever. First of all, I would love to see, like, really the seasonal influence being more like a narrative that according to the biome you are in, and you can even exaggerate that a little, you know, let the winter start in the Europe biome end of November and end this beginning of April. That's fair enough. It's a little bit more predictable, granted, okay, but you can also change how heavy it is or how little heavy it is, whatever, but then you could control this and make sure that it is connected to certain things. Like, for example, why would, for example, in winter, why would people still buy, like, these cool drinks. They just have to storm to basically buy hot drinks then. The same goes about different types of food. They will not buy any ice cream. Hence, it would make a lot more sense. But in this game, they do. If they're still queuing for ice cream, they will get ice cream. They will get milkshakes. They won't get a coffee and so on and so forth. You have the ingredients. Make sure that this would make sense that in a like, let's say you build a tiger zoo, why would you put down pip shot smoothies and stuff? That makes no sense, but a lot more coffee and all these things. And in the desert zoo, why would you put down other things, you know? Different values would also help to guide this a little bit better. And the same also goes for the animals, you know? Other than, other than putting down heaters and stuff for animals, there's no requirement. So, for example, why wouldn't there be a heavy restriction on desert animals for a taiga zoo. At this point, there isn't any. You can just get the, the animals and put them in. It would be so fun to have different habitat requirements for them according to the biome you're in. Just imagine you have to put down a, let's say a desert animal in a taiga biome or even like a tundra biome and it needs to be indoors. The game has the capability to understand if it's indoors or not, because that's how it's measured if it's warm or not. In fact, indoors even give a little boost in terms of temperature without putting heaters down, because they understand as soon as a building is fully enclosed, this has also a direct influence of how snow is calculated in rain. So how fun would it be if that needs to be a house and not only because of cosmetic reasons, it just needs to be a house. Different habitat requirements according to the biome and the season would be absolutely fantastic and, in my opinion, even be required. It would really balance out certain things. And with that, also make sure that the money restriction or actually the, the amount of money you need to have for a certain um, animal in different biomes and different seasons is also different. You know? That would also help by guiding or actually for guiding the people into the right animals for the right biome for those who do not spend a million hours researching which animal would go in here and not. That would help a lot. But it's time to go into the next topic, which is staff management. <laughs> and um, I've got the most beautiful staff area in here that you've ever seen. Now, staff management obviously became a thing of importance in this game. Uh, it has been treated a little bit more weirdly and vague in Planet Coaster. It got a lot more focus in Planet Zoo. However, I might add to that, there is still so much weird stuff going on in here. So let me start with the most obvious thing. We have staff pathing, which is great, but then again, 
the layout of it is sometimes down to how the AI works and sometimes AI is not really the most clever thing. You have to plop down an insane amount of these staff buildings. We don't really have too many problems with how this stuff works in this game, but this is where I'm going to pull out the first Joker and I said I will add two things that have to be changed and here is me adding the first thing. I believe we would need staff vehicles. In what sense of ever, let's, let's make it like a carriage and a cart or whatever, some smaller transport items, I don't care. But the way how the game forces you to build these tiny hubs everywhere is not how a real zoo would operate. And it's also not how a good layout could work, you know? And also you don't need to have any backstage access or something like that. You don't, you're not going to be rewarded for that. Many people go that extra mile, but it's not going to be rewarded. It is a matter of if you are willing to spend the time making these areas nice because you want to, or as I did it over here, just keep them functional because you just need it in that area and then just try to hide the ugly area with some bushes and stuff. That is legit the only thing. They added, at some point, they added the way how you can hide them and the more scenery you put to a house, the, the, little, the more little becomes the area of influence of this building, which is a nice change and a very welcome change. But it should be more rewarding by really reducing the radius tremendously up to the point where it doesn't have any influence anymore if it's really nicely hidden. Um, because that should be the way it, how it is in real zoos as well. You can treat the transformer a little bit different, I understand that. But carriage and... Even, we even have the props in-game, by the way. But carriages and vehicles would add a whole new dimension to how staff is treated. And then you could also add values for buying petrol for your carriage or maybe you have to fuel them with energy if it's an electric vehicle. Um, also, you have to buy and repair and maintain the carriages, which could be an additional job for your mechanic because I think the mechanic is one of the most underrepresented people in or staff members in here. At some point, you don't need them anymore because you can literally build every barrier of your habitats yourself without using them just use the invisible barriers you will have no barrier problems anymore because you know you don't have any barriers obviously anymore and then everything else what they do like repair the vending machines stuff you can do them because by just deleting them put down a new one or just repair them by clicking on them it doesn't change that you need one it, it's ridiculous but this way you could add a little bit more meaning to this certain staff member and it would also mean that you can balance out a little bit more where you put down your staff hubs and stuff like that so um, the whole staff pathing would become a lot more uh, you know used again because as you see I don't really have any staff pathing over here because the way I lay out my staff areas is always that they just have a hub and the only thing I do is I'm just gonna put okay I forgot it over here I guess but no I did this the only thing I do is I'm putting a tiny bit of staff path at a certain point to just use that as a block and then they can't go in here it's mostly because I find the staff path so ugly but this is the point, you know, you don't need them. But with actual staff path, which would be the only way on which vehicles could drive, you need to think about your layout in a different way. And this is how I would change stuff in general and also give me more meaning to the staff wages, as I said in the currency um, part of the video. Make sure that the staff wages are also connected to certain skills. And I'm not speaking about how well they do the skills, I mean skills that they have or don't have according to how much they, you pay them and which skill level they have have so for example a mechanic can only repair an electric vehicle after they are fully trained as an example that would be absolutely something that you need in a game to balance that out anyhow let's move on to the next point which is the animal care it's our last point before we draw a conclusion and you can see on the right hand side this animal is doing pretty well in its habitat but it is an outsider now Fair to say they have added quite a bit of stuff in the last couple updates that is helping to make the animal care more rewarding. But I will start with a bit more of a general thing. I spoke about that in the first part and now we have to go deeper into what conservation credits do. At this point in time, conservation credits are only a second layer currency if you want to have a tiny bit more better rated animals. They will not do anything else for your animal care. They don't have anything to do with your enrichment items. They don't have anything to do with how you treat your animals. And it's that it doesn't really matter if you get them or not, because sometimes you just have to wait for the cash listing. 
So, in order to make animal care a lot more focused and rewarding, we need connection to conservation. That means certain animal care items, like enrichment items, for example, or just the pure fact to be able to have a certain animal needs to be connected to the welfare of other animals in your zoo. Yeah, you have your reports. Yeah, you have protesters in your zoo. Again, you have all the ingredients. But other than having fines, there is no actual punishment. So how about animals will be taken away from you if you don't fulfill a certain thing in a certain time. And I need to actually take my second joker here, and that is events. I guess this game needs events. Look, it's pooping for us, but that, does, that shouldn't take away from the point. We need events. Events that will shape the way how you play the game, and these can be randomized. Let me give you an example. Imagine you're building your zoo, as I did over here for the animals, only cats, and the game understands that I'm only building cats, for example. And then there is an offer for me. There's an event, you know. The event could be, hey, we've got two lions. They come from a rotation of zoos. How about you take them within the next three months? You know, I know that this is a thing you have in one of the scenarios. So that's fine. And you have this practic in Jurassic World Evolution. So it's in here, okay. But... This thing could be, in this whole game, a way more big driver. Because this could then shape the way how I decide to go for the next animal. And let's say I didn't want to do the lion because it's too expensive at this point. I can either accept this and get some booze, for example, or get food for 10 months or whatnot as like a little reward. But then I go with the lion. But also, this would be a very positive one. Just imagine you have not fulfilled the requirements for the cheetahs over here three times in a row. And also this is something, you know, sometimes you just need to change a thing and they're happy again, you know, um, and nothing else happens. But just compare that with a yellow card in football, you know, is a warning. Once is a warning, twice is a warning, but the third time you're going to receive a red card and they will take away animals of your zoo. Or you will get punishments up to the point where certain animals will not be able to acquire it anymore at all. Just imagine you're not fulfilling needs 10 times and this will randomly pick one animal you cannot get in the zoo at all. I know it's harsh, but it will absolutely change the way how you will deal with animal care at all. Um, this could also be connected to enrichment items. Just imagine that certain enrichment items will only be available if you reach a certain level of animal welfare in your habitat. Now, the only thing it's connected to at the moment is research, which is fine. It's, it should still be connected to research, but it could also be connected to how well your animals have in terms or are in terms of welfare or how well your zoo is doing in terms of welfare before they get certain enrichment items. But then these enrichment items could be exactly the same ones, but with a boost or something like that. You know, again, there are the ingredients to make this whole Thing a lot more rewarding because this way would also make you eligible to you know just pace your game a little bit better you could also bring in other events like for example um a huge boost in guests, for example, or a huge decline in guests. You can make events like weather events, like let's say you have a heat wave coming, for example, and then you need to focus more on more drinking occasions for your animals. These things are well-known balancing factors in other games that have been used for decades to make management games better. And they are already in-game, you know, they are already in-game. This would make so much sense and it's all changing. I know it's, it's a huge balancing act and this is going to draw us now into the conclusion part of the video. All right, as the sun is beautifully setting over our rainy zoo, we talk about the conclusion. Now, I've spoken a lot about a lot of values and things that might be changed in the game according to their values and their impact on the game. I think the overarching fact for me is that this game has almost every ingredient needed to become a seriously great management game, no matter if it's for franchise challenge or the scenarios. The only thing they need to do is really make sure to balance out the different elements in the game with each other to make it more rewarding for the player. I'm not even speaking of challenging, I'm speaking about rewarding. Make things more meaningful. 
A fully done tour in your park should be absolutely endgame stuff, or maybe not endgame, but far into your game. It should not be... So, see, the point is, and this is also maybe something that many, many people who start the game feel like, and this whole video is based in your comments, or based on your comments. People feel overwhelmed by Planet Zoo's capabilities. They feel overwhelmed by the sheer amount of things to do. And the easiest way of making sure people do not feel that way is take a lot of these great tools away from them at the beginning and let them learn about these tools along the way. I think this is the, the, the first key thing. The first thing balancing thing, uh, thing is make a late game target progress in a way. Set yourself the target on which what should be the end goal for your zoo and that is pretty much whatever we have in the game right now. Just like a fully built zoo with all the things we have. That should be end game. And then just make a little progress how to get there and along the progress do unlockables, do events, do stuff like that. This is already halfway done. And the second part, like 50%, is balance out the way currencies work with each other and how you know, animal care ties into this management aspect of currencies. Make animal acquisition more meaningful. Make animals in your zoo breed more meaningful and not just as a breeding farm, but make that an event. Make breeding an event. Make breeding a bigger boost for education purposes, for example, or conservation purposes, for example. The sheer fact that you did breed should already give you conservation credits in the first place, rather than having to sell the animal you bred. There are many, many ways to balance this out without changing a single thing in the game other than values and maybe some menu items have to be changed. I get that. But I think this game could be absurdly great in terms of management. I can really not think of any game that has so, so many things already there, you know, existing. And just the usage of it is so weirdly done in certain places. I could ramble about this for hours and hours. I have really, I have put thousands, literal thousands of hours in this game. I think I can, fail, it's fair to say I know every single item in this game very well. I know that there is a lot of great stuff in here. And I would wish that there would be a huge overhaul in how they tie into each other. And just imagine that's a salad. At the moment, we just have a huge bazaar in which you have all the ingredients but not mixed together in a nice way and then put a dressing on no at the moment we just have them all lying in their corner each and then the right corner has some pepper on it the left one may have some salt on it um, the lower one has some french dressing on it but if you want to taste it everything just tastes on its own but it doesn't give you a whole experience you know we just need to take that huge bazaar and start shaking it so that all the ingredients come together and then just you know taste if if the spices are good and just mix up the spices a little and we've got a beautiful salad of what could be the beautiful game <laughs> i know this might be a ridiculous example but i wish to have a good planet zoo salad at some point i hope you too and uh, with that metaphor, I'm going to leave you alone for today. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this deep dive into balancing this game and making management actually fun and meaningful. Let me know if I forgot anything. Let me know what you think about my points. Let me know if you think in the first place that we have everything in the game or is there anything desperately missing that you think would need to be added? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for your attention. Have a wonderful day and goodbye.